Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Hi, this is Larry Glick, and I'll be seeing you right after the news on Radio 103. The Spirit of New England, WBZ Boston, Group W, Westinghouse Broadcasting. It's an incredibly mild 60 degrees here in Boston. Tonight's low will be in the 50s. I'm Ted Larson reporting the 12 o'clock WBZ News. A veritable swirl of news accompanied the return of Secretary of State Henry Kissinger to Washington Monday night from his latest Middle East trip. First, informed sources say the Arab oil embargo against the United States will come to an end next week. The sources say the oil will be turned on to pre-embargo levels and the price will go down from the present over $11 a barrel to around 7 The reports also say the Arab oil producing nations will resume production equal to levels reached before the October war. The tea can take you where you're going Take the tea to where you've never been They've been around this town So they know it up and down For years they served your family and your kin The trains are getting newer and some fares are going down We're trying to make it easier to get around your town It won't happen overnight But someday we'll be out of sight Basic folks, the answer is the tea. The tea has all the energy you need to get where you're going. So save your gasoline and get in and around town the quick, inexpensive way. You'll be doing a good turn for your environment as well as yourself. When it comes to getting around, the tea is your answer. Tea can take you where you're going. The answer is the tea. Harold Wilson is the new Prime Minister of Great Britain tonight. Labourite Wilson got the job when Conservative Party leader Edward Heath resigned this morning. Heath said he quit because he was unable to form a new coalition minority cabinet in weekend talks with Jeremy Thorpe, the leader of the third party Liberals. As soon as Queen Elizabeth appointed Wilson, he set to work forming the new government. WBC's Ed Fontaine reports from London. The new British Prime Minister, Harold Wilson, set to work tonight to prepare his new cabinet list saying that there is work to do, and he's starting right now in the interest of a unified nation. Mr. Wilson returned from his audience with Queen Elizabeth II after Edward Heath submitted his resignation following his inability to create a coalition with the Liberal Party. It's not certain whether that coalition would have been strong enough to maintain a government anyway, but the Liberals turned it down, advocating a national unity government of all main parties. Former Prime Minister Edward Heath supported that idea in principle and promised that his opposition would not be based on the negative premise of removing the Labour government from power. However, the Labour leaders who have spoken on radio and television have emphasized that the Labour government will submit its proposals and leave it up to the other parties to decide when to make their opposition total. Ed DeFontaine, Group W News, London. Well, yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir said she was quitting. However, today, she did an about-face and said she'd stay on the job for at least the next two days. Mrs. Meir said she'd continue to work to form a new minority cabinet. Her failure to come up with the new government was the reason for her resignation. The political crisis in Israel has formed fears that the U.S. State Department, the upcoming troop disengagement talks with Syria to be held in Washington, may be in danger. And federal judge John Sirica today ordered a hearing for Wednesday into that secret report given him by the Watergate grand jury. The judge wants to hear from all sides, including the White House, about what should be done with the report. Right now, here's the mild weather forecast for Boston and vicinity. Tonight, cloudy and mild, chance of a few showers, low temperatures in the 50s. Then on Tuesday, cloudy with scattered showers likely during the morning, becoming partly sunny by late in the day. Continued quite warm, high temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. Then Tuesday night, fair, low temperatures in the 40s. Looking ahead to Wednesday, mostly sunny and mild weather forecast once again. Not quite as warm, high temperatures in the 50s. The WBZ temperature now at 56. Repeating this hour's top story, informed sources at the State Department tonight say the Arab oil embargo against the United States will end next week. I'm Ted Larson, WBZ News. Reminding you, if you don't have a BZ ALA questionnaire yet, it's easy to get one. Just send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Commuter Computer, Box 103, Boston 02134. WBZ editorials have advocated public financing of election campaigns and urged people to use the presidential fund checkoff box for their 1973 federal tax forms. Here with the rebuttal is Steve Nelson of Cambridge. Beware. There's a trap in your federal income tax return. It's the presidential election campaign fund checkoff box. 
Now, I couldn't agree more that our election financing procedures badly need an overhaul, but this scheme is not the answer. First, it's a free ride for politicians, a means for them to siphon off your tax dollars under the cover of law. Second, it doesn't cover primary elections. So all a candidate has to do is win the primary by whatever corrupt means necessary and then coast through the general election on the public dole. Third, it subverts the Constitution. Elections were instituted as a means by which we, the people, can control our government. To give that government this control over the election purse is ultimately to give the government control over elections and over us. We can eliminate corruption without surrendering the independence of the ballot. Congress should impose a maximum on contributions and require in all federal elections, primary and general, that all contributions be made to a public account administered by the Treasury. All expenditures must be drawn from that account, and it would be a felony to make or receive a contribution or to purchase or sell campaign services other than through this account. Printouts of all campaign contributions and expenditures over $25 would be made public on a weekly basis. The tax dollar is already under too much pressure, even without the campaign fund checkoff scheme. So steer clear of the checkoff box. There's a wolf inside, ready to ravage your rights and swallow your taxes. Let's demand genuine election reform, not election giveaways. WBZ has presented rebuttal with Steve Nelson of Cambridge. He was replying to our editorial urging people to use the Presidential Campaign Fund checkoff on 1973 tax returns. Eight and a half after 11 now on BZ Radio. Once again, we go back to Jerry Williams. Seven, eight.